Hey everybody, welcome to Do You Believe on Paranormal Zone TV, a live broadcast on YouTube. Hey, I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And for those who may be new to the show, if you would please subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And please don't forget to give the show a like. Now tonight's topic is the myth, the legend, one of the strangest paranormal phenomena is the dog man. Tonight's guest, my good friend Dave Spinks, he is a retired veteran, a writer-producer, a paranormal investigator, a researcher. Dave works at Dave Spinks Real Supernatural and Dave Spinks World of Weird. He is a TV celebrity as seen on History Channel, Travel Channel, Discovery Channel, and Destination America. Now coming live from Dave Spinks World in West Virginia, Let's welcome Dave Spinks. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, Noreen, uh, thanks for having me as always, and it's been a while this time, huh? Oh, yeah, it has been a while. I'm so glad you came back. I mean, we had talked about doing some shows, but I know you've been so busy. Now, so so tonight, I want to tell the viewers what we're going to do is Dave's going to we're going to do this show on Dog Man, and I'm showing you here uh, Dave's book that it has not been released yet, but it's in, going in publication, The West Virginia Dog Man. And I'm showing that to them right now, Dave. And so we're going to talk about not only West Virginia Dog Man, but the legend and the myth from other states as well. And Dave is the man to talk to on, on uh, crypto, cryptology. Um, but Dave is right now in his studio in West Virginia. And so when we're finished with this topic, Dave is going to talk about his store, which I, he showed me many times um, on, uh, on a video, uh, live video. It's, I've never seen anything like it. And you guys will be amazed what Dave has done. So he'll give us a tour of his store and he'll talk about, and he also has two projects that are up and coming. And I am so excited for him, and we'll be talking about that as well. But Dave, did you want to add any more to your profile, your bio that I gave to the viewers tonight? Oh, no. I mean, most of your viewers know, but uh, for the ones that don't, you know, I've been doing this for, I don't know, well, a little, a little over 30 years now. Um, you know, starting with my own encounters as a kid, uh, you know, I had saw some things that, uh, shaped my life so to speak and is why i do what i do today um you know it's morphed into this and snowballed over all these years and when you start looking into these things you soon have you know most people anyway when you spend any length of time doing this as noreen will tell you she did it for many years too you have more and more experiences and it kind of just intrigues you even more and you want to keep going and you want to you know we all do this because we're on our own spiritual journey so to speak but we want more and more, and then you have more and more experiences, and it keeps on going. Sometimes it gets pretty crazy with some of the things that happen to some of us, and some people just retire and don't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, uh, Maureen can attest to some of that. You know, she had some pretty crazy experiences over her time investigating the paranormal, which so have I. Many of you have seen and, and read my books on some of the things that have happened to me doing this stuff, but, um, you know, it's a real passion. Uh, of mine um, it's to me it's some of man's greatest unanswered questions are we alone in the universe uh, are there own, unknown creatures walking among us and what happens to us when we die that's why I do what I do um, I love all topics of the paranormal uh, to include cryptids UFOs and hauntings uh, I've written numerous books now and, and more on the way as Maureen said so um, one of the topics that fascinates me and I haven't really done a lot on yet and uh, but over the years, people so people come to me constantly, almost on a daily basis, with reported sightings of whatever type of creatures. You know, could be a Mothman type creature, could be uh, a Bigfoot, could be uh, any any un number of unknown creatures, right? So one of the ones that I've been getting a lot of reports on over several years now is the Dogman, which is also known as a werewolf. We all know what that is. We know what a Hollywood style werewolf is, but these creatures date, you know, these reports of these type of creatures date back for many, many years um, into the 16th century and even before that. In Greek, uh, you know, the whole one of the theories where werewolves actually started was uh, from 
a from a creature named like uh, a person named like Cohen uh, uh, fed the Greek god Zeus or Jupiter as the Romans called him tried to trick Zeus and he fed him raw meat well Ju- uh, Zeus got really mad and uh, supposedly as the legend and the myth and the, you know the whole legend goes he uh, turned him into a werewolf because of it uh, and we all know if you've read anything on Greek mythology um, the gods the Greek gods were not <laughs> if you angered them a lot of bad things could happen to you and you know, over the years, there's been a lot of research done into lycanthropy and everything, which is, you know, lichens is another word for werewolves that stems from Greek, from the Greek word lichen, proppy, and uh, which means werewolf, basically. So um, it's a man wolf. So, you know, that, that's supposedly how it all got started. And there's other theories and other suggestions out there. Um, there's links to a lot of the questions, one of the questions we always uh, see in Hollywood movies is you can kill a werewolf with what? A silver bullet, right? So mm-hmm. people have said, well, why does silver kill these things? Well, um, in a recent movie that was just done, uh, they tied it back to when um, Judas betrayed Jesus on the cross for the for the, the, the pieces of silver, right? So they, they theorized that that was an evil situation and the silver is the only thing that can kill one of these things. And there's other theories out there that they can be killed only when in human form. So you can take one down with a silver bullet, but then when it turns from wolf back into a human, that's when you kill them. That's the only time you can kill them. So um, it's otherworldly. It's a supernatural, some sort of supernatural um, gift or curse. Um, um, And we can talk about how these werewolves are supposedly created. What makes someone a werewolf? We can talk about that, too. Well, Dave, what's the difference between dogman and wo- and werewolf? The same thing. Same <gasps> they, thing. Well, then why do they give them two different names? Well, it's just like Bigfoot. You know, Bigfoot has 50 different names all over around the world. Um, so a dogman is a, a wolf that walks on two legs like a man. We know werewolves do that, too. So there's other, other types of mythology and uh, dog type creatures there's uh, a lot of them here in west virginia that date way back there was many dogman sightings here in west virginia but there's also what we would refer to as a hellhound okay that's um a, and if you know what a hellhound that's a black is dog. that are, are supposedly uh black dogs that uh, uh basically work for the devil and guard the gates of hell and if you make a deal with a demon or a devil that they when it, when your time comes due they send these hellhounds after you and drag your soul back to hell so that's a really spooky uh story if you think about it yeah. um uh, also there's all these uh different type of black dog sightings in west virginia and there's several different names for the same creature um there's a there's one here in west virginia called the snarly yow and the description of this thing is the same thing as a giant black wolf and this, these reports of this creature, a lot of them are, are on the Maryland-West Virginia border. And there's all these old stories, and there's even a historical marker there where they sent out this famous huntsman because this snarly owl, they called it, uh, was going around killing uh, all the livestock and even attacked some people trying to kill them. So they sent out, they, they, they found, they tracked this famous hunter down, brought him in, and he tracked the creature down, and he got a shot at it. And when he shot it, uh, it said that the bullet went clean through it and it didn't affect it. The, th- the beast rolled over and got back up and just simply disappeared. So it was a supernatural type creature of some mm-hmm. sort. And there's account after account after account of people driving down the road at night. They see a giant black dog in the road. They hit it. They look in their rearview mirror. The dog is rolling around and then it stands up on two legs like a man and, and runs off. And in some cases, it's even chased motorists. So. You know, we have to stop and take these accounts and, and say, well, what is going on here? This is, this seems more like a supernatural type of animal than a real flesh and blood sort of wolf creature, right? And then you, you, you have to also take in, there's a whole other uh, subsection of these type of beasts called a skinwalker that the natives talk about. Oh. And skinwalkers, you know, uh, you have to have all this shamanistic training, supposedly according to Native American tribes to be able to transform yourself into 
a, a, a different creature. They're shapeshifters or yeah. skinwalkers. And skinwalker, they will actually take the skin of a different animal, including humans, and they can turn themselves to, into that particular person or that particular animal by using their skin. And then they can also emulate their mannerisms and their voices. And it's said that if they do that, they can, you know, they can take over a whole family and they end up trying to kill a whole family. And there's all these other sub subsections of uh, curses and everything else on how werewolves are created. And they say they pass it down. The main one is if you are bitten by one, then you yourself will turn into one. And there's a whole other subsection that talks about, um, so if two parents or one of the parents uh, of a child is a werewolf, then that child too will also become a werewolf so there's many different fat ways that people look at this and, and theorize on how these things are created okay so then why why do they have okay so a werewolf we know what a werewolf is then why do they give the same creature supposedly a different name why why would you do that well that's that's with, as with anything or any, like so like I said Bigfoot has many different names and those are based off of cultural different cultural backgrounds you know different languages you know so you know essentially Bigfoot I mean you got Bigfoot the Yeti the Yahweh I mean there's so many of them Bigfoot yeah. has literally probably a hundred or more um, you know and each Native American tribe has a, a different name for the same creature they're like and, and when it comes to Bigfoots they have they're like people in my view because there's red ones, black ones, yellow yeah, ones, white ones, you true. know, and yeah. it's like people. So, and there's different hmm. sizes of them. In some areas, they're reported to be between seven and eight, nine feet tall. In other places, they, they there's reports of them being up to 10 to 12 feet tall. So, you know, the way, the best way to think about that is them being like people, you know. So, um, and it's just the same name for a different, you know, there's for the same creature, different names for the same creature because you know, here in West Virginia, each county has their own name for a Bigfoot almost. Um, so, all right. Devil. So then, they're, so, they're who, so who, who gave who gave the uh, werewolf the name Dogman? Where did that start from? That seemed to start more uh, around in the 70s and 80s and stuff when the Beast of Bray Road in Wisconsin was going down, when all these signs of wolves out in, that, in Wisconsin. Um, uh, also, I think there's some Native American stuff tied in with that, and there's also, you know, they, they call the dog soldiers and this and that stuff like that. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, um, you know, it's. It, I think it starts out as a localized thing, and then it just kind of spreads like wildfire on some of these names of these creatures and stuff. Um, you know, it just happens like that, and uh, you know, like look at. There's so many names for, you know, different types of creatures. Like you got Momo and, ne you know, Nessie and all this stuff. And those are just names given to these creatures by the locals. And then it spreads out like wildfire around the world. So that's, you know, you know, that's really how it really happens, you know, for the most part. And yeah. So, but the proper name, you know, the proper name for a werewolf is where it's, where the actual name and verbiage comes from is lichen. It's a lichen, L-Y-C-A-N. Yeah, I've heard of that. Lichen problem. So, you know, I mean, that's where it all stems from. Then you have all these slang names that come in, like werewolf and dogman and snarly owl and all these different names for basically the same type of creature. But some of them are different. You know, some, like the snarly owl here in West Virginia and the blue devil sightings of uh, the 1930s here in West Virginia, those creatures were all, they all walked and ran on four legs like a normal wolf. The, some of the other sightings that I have reported are the reason they call it a dog man is because it's a dog-like creature or a wolf-like creature that walks on two legs. It, it's bipedal like a man. So, you know, I think that's where they kind of combine those two words to make one, dog man. So it, it has all wolf features. It's covered in hair, but it has long arms with, you know, with hands like a man and with claws. And then it walks on two legs. And they're usually reported between six to nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. They're really muscular in nature, but they have a dog face, a wolf like face, and they're covered in hair. And they have the dog yellow colored eyes. And some have been reported to have red eyes as well. So, uh, 
you know, there's just lots and lots of reports. And a lot of them have been coming to me over the years. So now, and I've actually, <laughs> the, the, the compelling, some of the compelling stuff that I've come across that I've had reported to me, I have a prosecuting attorney in one of the counties here in West Virginia that had a whole dog man sighting. We went out, we got some track cast, uh, and then about six months later, his son and his, and his son's friend were four wheel riding, four wheeler riding at night, and they came around a turn and they both saw about an eight foot tall, what they described as a werewolf standing there behind an old boat that was dragged out in the woods and because their lights hit it and they both stopped dead in their tracks when they were riding their four wheelers and they said they freaked out and spun out of there and, and before they, when they like went to turn the four wheelers, the thing just squatted down behind the boat and was hiding and they wow. freaked out. Uh, oh my God. The same area um, as the, the dad had seen and this is a prosecuting attorney, mind you. This is a, a very good witness, someone that works closely with law enforcement that has to use evidence to prosecute criminals. So those are the type of people, when they tell you something like this, you really got to stand up and pay attention because that's somebody who has something to lose by sharing a story like this, okay? But it, it, it affected him so much that he felt compelled to tell someone, so he reached out to me and... I went out and investigated it. I got more to do out there. He sent me numerous videos and everything. And we're going to do more out there soon, uh, just in the next several weeks. So, oh, my God. Um, you know, that's one of the numerous cases I have here just in West Virginia alone. And, um, you know, I felt compelled enough to, and I've done enough research on this topic now, and I've got enough cases now to do a book on it because, you know, people don't associate West Virginia with um, – with werewolf or dogman type sightings that much, but there are several historical accounts here in the state of West Virginia, and there are new cases happening fairly regularly. So it's something that I felt compelled to investigate and research into more, and that's why I'm doing the book on it. Dave, can I share with the viewers, I sent this picture to you as well. Um, yeah. this is, this is, uh, and, and my viewers, if you watch the show regularly, you'll know, um, this is from Rainbow. This is from Rainbow. Um, I've had her on the show several times and <clears throat> she sent me this picture and she said that, uh, she knew I was doing a show with Dave on Dogman and she said, Noreen, this is a picture I, that we, her and Michael had captured. And she said, I thought I would share my photo of the dogman that Ma Michael and I saw in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was standing by the tree. It was broad daylight and I watched him walk away from us. The dogman telepathed to me that his name was <clears throat> Tulac and that there is a natural porter around in the area where I, we saw him. And just so everyone knows, he did put out energy to not come near him. <clears throat> so she sent this to me, and so I thought I would share that with everyone. <clears throat> and yeah, that, that story is very interesting. Um, you know, I, you sent me the picture, I looked at it, and I had a couple other people look at it. And, um, to me, it really resembles a, a, a big brown bear, or it could even a, be a light-skinned black bear. Uh, light colored haired black bear but the only thing that looks uh, a bit different on on that particular picture is the ears now bears have rounded off ears uh but that's not to say they don't that, that one particular animal could have a set of more pointed ears so it's really hard to tell when you get pictures like this i, I and i really appreciate people sharing stuff like that because you know that's our job as investigators we need to take a look at that stuff but when you take into account her story with it, that's very bizarre, you know, uh, if you think about it, because she said the, the creature was telepathically communicating with her. Right. So that's definitely some sort of supernatural event going on there at the same time that she snapped the picture. So, you know, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty just a trippy story if you ask me. Um, and, you know, we also know that, um, Bigfoots. People have reported similar situations with Bigfoots. They, they. Some of them have become frozen in place. They said they could not move when they were observing this Bigfoot from a short difference of di uh, distance away. And uh, that's the first time I've ever heard of one that she felt it was a, uh, a werewolf or a dogman type creature. 
uh, that's the first time I ever heard one where she was communicating, someone was communicating telepathically with that type of creature. So that is that a skinwalker or a shapeshifter? Possibly. It could be Native American in nature, too. So, you know, you never know what you're going to run into out there. It's fascinating stuff, and I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, me too. Rainbow has uh, the ability to telepath with... Uh with uh, entities and creatures. Uh, you know, Dave, I wanted to share this with you also. I was listening to a radio show the other day that does shows strictly on dogman encounters. And this lady, um, she said, uh, so, uh, okay, so this lady said she had uh, a firsthand experience with dogman in Kansas. She said that the encounter did not reach out to her or bother her, and uh, in her any uh, bother her in any way. And she just wanted uh, to let people know that she thought they were not harmful in any way. He he walked past her, and he just went on to what he was doing. And she felt no. She said it was scary. It was scary as hell to see him. But she said she felt no danger whatsoever. He he did not appear to be like he was going to be harmful to her, and she just thought, you know, just leave these leave these entities alone. That's what she said. Mm. But that was well, her experience. You know, when you talk about things like that, you know, you can't you can only uh, make a make an assessment or a judgment based off of your own personal experience. You can't tell all these other people that they didn't feel danger or they were they felt they were in danger from this type of thing or they had you know because some people have reported being chased by these things people have been reported being bitten and in the old stories in france where these you know there was rashes of accounts from people being murdered by these werewolf dogman type creatures uh i mean in into the into the numbers into the hundreds of people mm. so uh, to the point where whole villages were sending out armed hunting parties, hunting these things down and killing every wolf they saw. So, you know, you can only make it a judgment that she, you know, she felt that this thing was not, it, she was not in any danger. That was her own personal experience. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too hasty to say these things are not dangerous because we just don't know. You can't base your, you can't base what you, what your experiences was off of what other people's are. So. Mm -hmm. You have to be really careful when you say say stuff like that. Yeah, got you on that. That's that's it's like true. When it, with any type of wild animal or any kind of supernatural situation. You know, you gotta be mindful and be safe. That's the only thing I can tell you. You can't just say, "Well, they're all safe." No, you can't say that. You know, there's been this with like you know, I'll go back to Bigfoot. I remember Bigfoot. There's people that have had very mundane and spiritual experiences when they've seen Bigfoot and others have been terrified because they felt their life was in danger and things were thrown at them and everything else. So you have to just, you know, your encounter was your encounter. It wasn't everybody else's encounter. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the stories in uh, West Virginia? Um, are the encounters, what kind of encounters are they getting? Um, and there's, but nobody has a picture, right? No, nobody has a picture of, of the West Virginia uh dog man? I haven't come across any good pictures. I've come across some uh, questionable foot track uh, castings and pictures, which I've got a few, but I'm not. I, didn't, I can't share them on here because I want people to get the book and see them in the book. So, oh, okay. Um, you know, I wait because there's very few. There's only a few of them. So, um, so there's all kinds of encounters into the hundreds that I've come across. Um, there's there's one, there's a whole rash of uh, sightings and, and encounters that uh, happened in here in Webster County in the 1930s, and they, they call it the Blue Devil sighting. They, they, they said this, you know, it was, they call it the Blue Devil because it was solid black, but when the moonlight shined on it, it had a shiny coat, and it looked bluish black in color, so they call it the Blue Devil. But there's also a Bigfoot here in West Virginia called the Blue Devil, so and it's the same situation, but it's a black furred creature, the moonlight shone on it and gave off a bluish tent to the fur so there's um, there's encounters where people have simply been driving down the road and they've seen this dog man creature run across the road now some of these encounters and sightings obviously all of them 
you know, there's always room for misidentification of a bear running across the road. We have a ton of black bears here in West Virginia. Some are very, very large in size, and they do stand on their own two feet, uh, on two feet like a man, but only very rarely they don't walk on their, their – they, like they're not going to stand on two legs and walk across a road. They might stand up to look around and sniff the air, or they're trying to climb up in a tree. They'll stand up and do that, and they scratch on trees and stuff. But you know, the reports – some of the reports are this thing was a definite uh, werewolf running on two feet like a man and ran right across the road in front of us. Other people have claimed it, run them over in cars. Uh, and they look in their rear view, slam on the brakes, look in their rear view, and the thing's rolling, you know, after they ran it over, and it gets up and uh, runs off. In one account, it, it got up and just simply disappeared, like just evaporated. So, like, it was a supernatural, but they felt the thing go underneath the car like the car was going boom, 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 like it ran over something hmm. and um, so you know there's all these supernatural type encounters that are, have been reported and uh, there's all these regular type where they saw you know a, a giant wolf on four legs but it had red eyes and it was an abnormally large you know so there's there's so many different variations of it but there's enough to you know that it warrants more investigation it warrants you know, some more research, and that's what I've been doing for this book, because no one's ever done a book on the West Virginia sightings. I mean, I'm going to be the first, so you know, I think it's compelling, and it's pretty. There's enough accounts and sightings out there that uh, you know it needs to be done. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Now. Yeah, there's there's well, there's sightings in Michigan, Wisconsin. Uh, All over Pe the yeah, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Hey, Dave. Okay, so I've had. In the years past, I've had several guests that communicated, they say they have communicated with Bigfoot through telepathy. And yeah. now Rainbow said to me, or sent me the message that she had communication with this um, dog man through telepathy. Have you heard that on any other cases? Yeah. No, that's what I was saying earlier. That was really bizarre to me because I've never heard that with a with a dogman encounter ever. So that's a new one for me. Um, now, that's not saying that other people haven't. You know, I've heard of some some of the Native American tribes people having encounters with a, a skinwalker that was a wolf. You know, and they were able to communicate with it, but not really telepathically. But you know. That, it's a new one on me, but it's still pretty interesting. That's something totally different. And I, I'm not saying, you know, that there hasn't been people, there may have definitely been other people that have had reports come to them of people telepathically communicating with a dog man, but that's the first one, first for me, hearing that one. So, Dave, what was the first sighting of a dog man? Do, do, do you know when that was first sighted? Um, in in the 18th. 17th century over in France, uh, there was a lot of werewolf reported sightings. Uh, you know, over there, it was like some of the villages were experiencing people getting murdered by a giant wolf, man-like creature, um, and uh, that's where it really started. But you know, it goes it goes even farther back to that with the Greek mythology and stuff, where these lycanthropes came from. You know, because the one uh, Lycoan was his name, uh, fed Zeus the raw meat, and he was turned into a werewolf for it. So. Um, you know, is that real? We don't know, or is it just myth? So, but you, you know, here we are today. However, me, you know, so all these hundreds and hundreds of years later, uh, and we're still getting reports all over the world and all over the United States of these dogman and werewolf type creatures. So there's got to be something going on here. Not all of them are misidentifications. Not all of them are, you know somebody that's crazy or high on something there's something to it because we have reports from police officers prosecuting attorneys doctors lawyers lawyers school teachers these are credible people that know what they saw they describe it to a t and uh you got to take that into account as an investigator there's something going on here with all of this and uh, now like with bigfoot um <sighs> They, kind of, they believe, kind of believe that, well, and I do too, that Bigfoot comes in as in another dimension. 
through an, through a portal. Do you believe that as well with Dog Man, and maybe werewolves? I, not for me, no. I don't. No? I think it's some type of creature from this planet, from this plane, from this dimension. Um, whether it is some sort of curse, uh, you know, some of the ways that people, you know, like I, I touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, there's different belief systems uh, that people can be turned into a werewolf by a witch from a curse, uh, by being bitten by another one, um, and or being born from a parent or two parents of one. So there's all these different, uh, you know, ways that, uh, from what I've read, been reading from the folklore and, and, and the mythology of it all, um, those are the ways, some of the known ways that you can be turned into a werewolf or born of a werewolf, you know? So, um, you know, one, <laughs> one doesn't know. We just have to read and research and make our own opinions and theories about it. Um, and it's like anything else, uh, you know, in all of this stuff, I always tell people, you know, it's like religion and politics. You can't convince anything, anyone that spirits are real or uh, a Bigfoot is a real type of creature, whether it's interdimensional, extraterrestrial, or the long dead extinct ape species on this planet, unless they have their own experience, you know, you're not going to change anyone's mind unless they have their own experience. And that's, and all I do is say, look, here's where I was. This is what I was doing. And this is what I got when I was doing it. Make up your own mind because, you know, people know me enough now to know that I don't beat around the bush. And if I don't think it's paranormal or supernatural or, Whatever the case, I'm not going to say it's that. I'm just going to say this is what I got. Make up your own mind because there's something to it when you have literally hundreds, if not thousands, of reports of these things every year, you know, uh, all around the country and all around the world. And people's uh, livestock is coming up dead, ripped to shreds. Um, and people are seeing these wolf like creatures running on two legs, and they call them a dog man. So, what is going on here, you know? Now, I'm not saying there's not a possibility they could be interdimensional, they could be supernatural, they could be, there could be different variations of each one of these types of werewolves or dogman type creatures. They could be all different species of something, you know, doing different things. So there's so many ways you can run with this stuff that it's, it's overwhelming sometimes. But um, they have, you know, there's even talk and rumors that there is active uh, werewolf cult, cults throughout the world to this day. So it almost like they're tribes of werewolves from all around the world. And there's actually writing on this stuff. And there's, there's werewolf cults, just like there's vampire cults and vampire covens out there that are, that's a real thing folks. So, you know, do all you have to do is do a little research and start digging around and you'll find all kinds of interesting stuff on the internet. Uh, people that claim to be werewolves, they say that you could tell, you know, one of the, one of the little little superstitions and stuff they say, if, you know how some people have a unibrow right here and they have one eyebrow because they got a real oh, big yeah, eyebrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. They said that's the one sign to tell people are a werewolf. <gasps> really? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and then we know that some people have that, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of uh, disease where they're they they grow hair all over their face and everything, and they they used to have oh. they still have some of those folks running around today, and then yeah. you'll see them in sideshow circus shows and stuff. And it's a I forget the name of it. Yeah, right it's a disease. Right yeah, now. but uh, they literally have hair all over their right. face, and they look like a wolf. Uh, absolutely, yes, yeah. I and know. It's a, so okay, okay, Dave. So with all these sightings, how come there's no body how come body. They, yeah just like bigfoot so you know it's another one of those you know enigmas that we are trying to figure out so with the werewolf or a dog man we know you know all we know is what we see on hollywood right you see so you see in these hollywood movies a werewolf gets shot when it's in its wolf form with a silver bullet and within a few seconds the thing turns back into a human body so is that a real explanation for why we don't have a body? Because, you know, and, and the whole theory is when the full moon happens, that's when they go from human form to wolf form. So is that real? I don't know. You know, that's what we're looking into. So uh, for the book. Okay. So it's, it's very interesting and fascinating stuff. Um, 
uh, they also there's another old like wives type tale when it comes to werewolves if 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 a if a child is conceived on the new moon on the 13th moon of the year that they will automatically be a werewolf so that's there's all these cool little superstitions and mythology to it all um and it's really like a lot of work to to kind of sift through all these different mythologies and legends and superstitions of these type of creatures but what we do know is that there are literally hundreds of reported sightings multiple hundreds every year just in the United States alone but it would seem like most of the uh, the beginnings of the werewolves and dogman tales really all started over in Europe in the I think it's the 16th century if I'm not mistaken off the top of my head but um, that's when you know all these werewolf attacks started happening and they sent out all these hunters and people were getting mauled to death by these things and some eaten uh, others were bitten and then they were said to turn into these creatures so, you know, it seems like that's where the werewolf, uh, it's like the beast of Jovedan in France is where the first one happened. And I, I know I didn't pronounce that right, and I apologize, but I don't speak French, so you got to pardon my, <laughs> yeah. my, my French. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like the beast of Jovedan. And, but, you know, I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, excited about uh, Ken Gerhardt. He's a well-known dog man researcher and cryptozoologist. He wrote the foreword for the new book and uh, you know it's it's compelling stuff and I just want to tell the West Virginia part of the of the dog man story and the werewolf stories you know the little mountain state part of all of this stuff because it's not very you know it's not really talked about here in West Virginia that much but there are historical sightings there's even a historical state sign over there you know that talks about when the, that that hunter went out and shot the the, the the huge black wolf dog and uh he just it was like a super a supernatural event you know he shot it and he know he, he knows he hit it and the thing just stood up like it wasn't even affected and it just disappeared and dissolved right in front of his face and he hauled out of there you know he got out of there so there's and then that's just one of several of the very historical happenings here in the mountain state with these crazy uh wolf dog man and werewolf type creatures yeah so the majority of these sightings are just of a single entity, an encounter. Yeah, I've never got one that had multiple, multiple creatures in, in this state anyway. I've never seen one or, or, or had one reported to me where they saw more than one of them. Isn't that, doesn't that seem strange, Dave? Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I've got plenty of Bigfoot sightings that there was, you know, been reported more of more than one together like a, a almost like a family unit a, a mom dad and a, and a child a, a smaller one like would be a child of one but never multiple uh dog man type creatures and then all these creatures seem to be adults yeah Not adult yeah huh i that's, wonder that's, that's part of the nomenclature of these you know what are these things you know so why aren't why aren't they seen with more than one of them you know together Okay, so don't you think that's kind of weird that sure. they have these adult wolfman, dogman uh, sightings? Um, uh, there's uh, well, singly, know. and there's no bodies ever found. The, uh, that the right. whole thing well, is if you, right. I mean, one like I said, one explanation would be okay if they're in wolf form and they get shot with a silver bullet. And then they, they immediately turn back into human form. So it wouldn't leave a body of a wolf. It would leave a body of a human. So that's part of the folklore and the lore of these things. You know, uh, also, you know, they tend to, what I've read on, on the whole situation is that, uh, say if one, say if one is born to parents that are werewolves and it's a child, it doesn't turn into a, a werewolf until it reaches the age of maturity, which would be like 16 or 17 when it's, you know, becoming an adult and it starts transforming into the wolf and the dog or dog man. So, you know, and then when it comes to the Native American lore on these things, um, if they are shamanistic type wolf, you know, shapeshifters, they have to do all this training and, and for years and years before they can physically transform themselves into a, a dog man or a wolf, werewolf type creature. So, you know, that would say to me that they, they're adults when they learn how to do that. By the time they learn how to do it, they, they become adults or young adults, you know. So, uh, 
it's all interesting. It's something totally different for me. So it's kind of a learning process for me as I go to, um, to, to learn and write about this type of, uh, folklore and mythology. So, um, I've never seen one. Um, I don't know anyone personally other than the people that I've interviewed that claim to have seen one of these creatures. I don't know any other investigators that investigate these creatures who have seen one. Um, you know, uh, and I've been in contact with many well-known dogman researchers uh, during the course of researching and writing this book um, to include Jody Cook and Ken Gerhardt and uh, Linda Godfrey is another one. You know, I mean, she's, a, she's one of the big ones in the, the whole Beast of Bray Road uh, story. She's written numerous books and been on numerous television shows about it. And she broke the story. She was a journalist, and she was one of the first ones to break that story in Wisconsin. Yeah, the Bray, so, Bray, you know, Bray Road. Um, but she recorded many strange howls in the woods that have been, you know, sent off to vocalization experts, and they came back as not any known wolf in the country, and, and different things like that. So um, I know, I, I know. For me, I'd much rather see a Bigfoot in the woods than I would a dog man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! What so? Where do they usually live? The same type of environment that that Bigfoot lives in, the woods by the water. That's a tough question, Noreen, because nobody really, nobody really knows. So if they are, let's just say, okay, so what's known in the folklore about them is they're humans, right? But they turn into these wolf creatures or these dogmen. So by day they're living as a human, but when the full moon comes or something happens they turn into a, a wolf creature so they want to go hunt and that you know that to, and hunting to them includes humans deer or any other beast that a predatory animal like a wolf would eat right so um so they would live just about anywhere apparently if they're human uh first and foremost and then they turn into this wolf-like creature so they're seen all over the country you know i think when people see them they are out hunting you know, and when they run across the road, they're looking for their next kill or whatever. So, you know, if it's a predatory type animal, it would make sense that that's what they're doing. They're out hunting. They're hunting deer or whatever type of food they're, they want to eat for the night. Dave, do you think that there really are humans that are werewolves? Do you think that's we what have the some? Said. That's what the folklore says. And I mean... Who knows? I mean, there's some evidence out there pointing to some type of giant dog creature that walks on uh, two legs like a man. Right. Okay. Okay. I've seen many tracks. I've seen track castings of these things that are canid in nature. You know, not human, but canid, uh, dog-like, bigger than as big as your hand. So imagine if there's a dog track as big as your hand, and there's only two of them. That's a massive animal. Okay, so look at it. Th- okay, so let me. I'm th- I'm thinking as a no- regular normal person. This dog man um, is big. They're normally at least seven feet tall, if not taller. You said they have big hands. They're big husky animals. Well, would if this was a human that turned into the dog man? What size would the human be, or just when they they turn over, they they their everything changes on them. Their whole yeah, I mean, if you've seen any, you know, if you see any of the Hollywood movies, these things when they're when a person turns into one, you know, they their whole bone structure changes and they grow much larger and taller. Okay. And it's it's crazy when you see some of the movies when they transform. Yeah, that but makes sense. I'm not saying that's what happens. That's just trying to give you a visual of what is supposedly taking place you know now there's other accounts where a person just turns into your standard four-legged wolf or more like a dog than this giant creature that stands on two legs like a man so there's varying reports on these things you know some are some are running on four legs and look just like a an oversized wolf you know in nature and some are that are seen and reported are standing on two legs like a man, but they're a wolf in reality. So, mm. you know, there's many, when you, when you get right down to it, there's like two or three different types of these wolf creatures, you know? So it's pretty, it's pretty crazy stuff. I also read Dave that, um, 
They have a fearsome howl that sounds like a human scream. Have you heard that before? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard uh, talk of that. Like, like I'm saying, Linda Godfrey has some pretty compelling recordings uh, that have been aired on TV shows and different things uh, that could not be identified as a known animal in, in a documented animal, you know, from scientific documentation purposes. So, and other people do too. I mean, and uh, I've heard some weird stuff. You know, some of the places I go when I'm out researching and investigating is literally out in the middle of nowhere. And you've, I've heard some howls over the years that didn't sound like any coyote or wolf I've ever heard. And, um, and you know, it echoes down through the valley. I'm not saying it was a dog man or a werewolf, but I've heard some strange, crazy noises in the woods over the years being out there in the middle of nowhere that couldn't be explained. So, you know, you just, you never know what you're going to run across when you're out in the boonies. You know, I go out places that are 20 miles in the middle of nowhere where there's no houses for 20 miles or more. In some, in some of these places, in these remote areas here in West Virginia, and some of the stuff we hear and record is just will, will blow your mind. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so here's another thought. Um, oh, somebody has a question. Oh, Renee, my mod. Noreen asked Dave if a skinwalker would be considered a possible dog man, although I know they can morph into other forms. Yeah, that's what we were talking about yeah. earlier, Renee. It's a good question. Um, yeah, you know, a, a skinwalker can takes the form of other animals and people by taking their skin, basically. Okay, um, and, and then there's shapeshifters too that can. They're more like a witch type of person. You know, they're it's a Native American witch or or witch doctor or shaman um, that can change their entire body into whatever either another person or any type of animal that they, that they, that they, you know, they want to basically. So, um, it's spooky stuff, you know, when it gets down to that stuff. So there's two different types of Native American situations that, uh, can definitely be a person turning into a, a wolf or a dog man type creature. You know, I was thinking also, um, because they don't find an, an actual body, and they're they're canines. Um, suppose okay, so, so they, uh, suppose they find bones like in a forest, and they come across these bones that belong to a, a dog, just a large dog. Maybe it could be a dog man because there's no no skeletal, you know, they're just like big bones, and there's no actual flesh type body that they're not connecting it to a dog man is that possible sure i mean i don't know of any giant sets of canid bones but there are some i mean there are some that have been found you know there's wolves that have been found uh dating way back that were massive and there's actually some video that's floating around out on the internet that was very compelling if it's real if it's not cg but you can see this one there's one particular one i'm talking about you can probably find it on youtube just type in giant black wolf and dog right and you'll see like someone's domesticated dog going crazy and it's running barking and there's so you can sit you can tell there's something black laying down over where this little dog is mm-hmm. running around it and this thing stands up and it's literally the biggest black wolf you've ever could ever dream of seeing i mean this thing is massive compared to the dog and the dog's not a little tiny dog it's a normal size medium size long to large size dog and it dwarfs this dog like it's, I mean, it's massive. It's ma- it's like five, six times bigger than this dog. And it's just, just real hulky and bulky too. So, you know, we know that there was very large wolves back in, you know, way back in other times of uh, nature and evolution. But everything over the years has shrunk down, like, you know, like the woolly mammoths were massive and things like that. But nowadays, you just don't see that many ginormous creatures like that. And that thing is massive. Um, I don't know if you guys if you guys check my Facebook page. Um, an interesting thing doesn't have anything to do with dogmen, but some people were in this jungle and they were doing some some type of construction work, and they actually scooped up a fifty foot long python. Oh. And this thing is like this big around. 
Damn. And they got it on a giant piece of machinery, and it's alive. It's not dead, and it's it's 50 feet long. It's unreal. I've never seen a snake that big. And I posted on my Facebook. I said, "Do you think there's not real monsters out there? That's a real monster right there. That can eat a human like it's nothing." Oh, swallow them, yeah. It, it's massive, oh. and you hear all the stories about these giant snakes that have been seen over the years and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's all in the, within the realm of possibilities. You know, there's. There's stuff all around us that we just don't understand. There's, you know, there's there are monsters around us. It wasn't that long ago when uh, they thought the, the kraken or the giant, another word for that is a giant squid, you know, the kraken, we thought that was a myth, but in reality it was real. Some Japanese fishermen caught a 65 foot long giant squid. It's all over video, it's there, and other people have caught them on video now, um, you know, so they're constantly finding new species on this planet excuse me <coughs> and that's one thing that fascinates me there so much of the planet's unexplored it's not even funny you know um, especially in the ocean so uh you to to talk about this stuff and, and uh, research and investigate you have to have an open mind you, you know you don't just shut everything out just because there's not a body there's never been a body uh you know recovered or, or there's or, or whatever, you don't want to just say, oh, that doesn't exist just because of that simple fact, because they're finding new things on a daily basis. Other people have seen them before, they're just like the Kraken. They never had a Kraken body, but lo and behold, they finally caught one. So, you know, you never know what's out there. There's stuff that we don't know about that's all around us all the time. Well, I know that you used to go um, Bigfoot hunting in your woods. Oh, I still do. <laughs> oh, you're still doing it? <laughs> yeah, I do this all the time. I live this for real. Oh, <laughs> um, have you come across one? Just the one when I was a kid. The one I wrote in the book about. That's what started me in all this. Well, Dave, you've not only seen Dogman, but you saw flat the uh, that Flatwood uh, Bush monster as well, didn't you? Or was it your grandfather? No. Oh, no, I've never seen that. Oh, that was your <laughs> grandfather. No, 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 me and my grandpa saw the Bigfoot, and um, the Flatwoods monster. Um, my uh, mom's first cousin and them went to school with the boys that did see it, oh, okay. and so I grew up hearing all about it. How terrified they were, you know, as kids. Don't, they didn't want to. They were really poor back in those days, so they didn't want to. Uh, they didn't want to, they had an outhouse so they didn't have running uh, uh, running toilet back in those days that's how poor they were so they didn't um, want to go outside and use the bathroom at night because they were scared the flatwoods monster was going to get them because their friends and their mom had seen this thing you know so uh, you know when it it's that close it, stuff like that hits that close to home and you grow up hearing about it you know and then they asked me to talk about it and in a movie and I've been in a couple movies about the Flatwoods monster now but uh, the Bigfoot situation was me and my grandfather were fishing here right down the road from here and um, we had a Bigfoot encounter and that's really what started me in all this but <laughs> sorry my allergies are oh, killing me but, bless you um, but I never talked about that because I made him a promise not to talk about it because he was a preacher for 40 plus years and he didn't want to think, you know, he didn't want his parishioners thinking that uh, he was nuts or he was drinking or doing drugs or something, you know. So we kept that quiet all these years. And, uh, and when I was a kid, I was constantly researching and trying to find out more information as to what that creature was that I saw that day with him, you know. And uh, then I started coming across stories about the Yetis and everything else all around the world, the Yahweh. And there's so many different ones all around the world. And then I saw the show In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy, and they happened to be doing a Bigfoot episode, and I said, I said that's what I saw right there. And, uh, you know, of course, they had some recreations, but I knew then that I wasn't nuts, and I saw what I saw, and it was real. So I didn't even know what a Bigfoot was when I was 13. I never <laughs> heard of one, you know? Yeah. Well, how many kids, you know? I mean, in, in, in when we were in those days, Dave, there wasn't, all the social media and everything, and yeah, of course you wouldn't have known about it. Hey, um, uh, uh, Sarah Claire said um, there was a huge Batman thing found in Thailand. Do you know anything about that? A Batman? Yeah, in Thailand. They found it in Thailand. 
No, I didn't hear that one. Was that recently or? I guess I don't know. She didn't say. So when you say Batman, are you referring to like a Mothman type creature, like a winged humanoid? She didn't say. Hey, now you know now now Mothman. Um, they say what he? It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it can bring the sign of bad things to come. Yeah, they say it's a. It's a harbinger of doom. Yeah. Um, when you see the Mothman, the, the Mothman, the Mothman. When you see the Mothman, you, you, that means something really bad is going to happen. Or, you know, and some people believe that the, that creature actually caused that bridge to fall, killing all those people. But others think that it's just he, when, he, when he shows up that it's a, you know, it's a warning to everyone to, to take heed that something bad is going to happen. So they, uh, people look at it a different way. Some people feel there was a similar creature spotted for, you know, literally hundreds if not thousands of years uh, a winged demon by the name of Pazuzu you know and that was the same demon that uh, that there was pictures taken of during the exorcist movie you know that statue that was Pazuzu and they say that's a winged demon uh, you know in this and that and and when it comes it brings disaster with it so you know there's all kinds of folklore all kinds of things out there about these things and uh, what they exactly all are we don't know some people think that Mothman like Bigfoot is an ET, you know, because yeah. when there when there's a rash of these sightings in an area, there's also a rash of UFOs or strange lights in the sky that they can't explain, and they seem to happen concurrently or right around the same time. So, you know, it's all part of doing the research and investigation into what these things could be or possibly may be, and uh, you know, knowledge is power. So we try to share what we know and by writing books and talking about it on these shows. Uh, Christopher Chris says, Noreen, could they be a form of an alien? Could it be an alien? Anything's possible. Yeah. Anything's possible. You know, uh, you know if, you're, if you subscribe to the uh, whole alien theory, you know, that there are, uh, it's told that there are numerous uh, types of aliens out there. There's reptilians. There's the ape species aliens. There is uh, the greys. There's five different factions of greys there's the, the, the draconians there's you know there's so many of them there's the uh, the, the long haired uh, the whites you know they call them and then there's even more ancient ones than that are that are actually like light beings they're just made of light and they're not even they don't even have a physical form mm-hmm. you know they just appear as a light being so there's so many different things out there why they're sure they could be an alien we don't know you know we just don't know um, but they could be demonic in nature too. I mean, there's so many ways you can run with this stuff, and it's fascinating. And it's, uh, you know, some of it can be downright scary if you t- if so, so subscribe to, you know, you made a deal with the devil, and now your time's up, and they, he sends the hellhounds after you to drag you back to hell. That's pretty scary if you think about it. So, you know, uh, that's some of the things you have to look at and research and when you're doing this stuff. Dave, um, West Virginia has so many of these. Um monsters tell the viewers how many that are in west virginia that you oh, know about oh it's a, it's over a hundred i mean a hundred oh yeah some are way less known you know than others but you have what the big four or five you've got to the bigfoot of course you've got mothman is probably the number one known in the world and it's right here in west virginia but it's also been seen, Mothman's been seen all over the world, not just here in West Virginia, but it's famous here in West Virginia because when it showed up and were, and it was showed up numerous, there was numerous sightings over a whole year period. And then when it all came to like a climax, the, the Silver Bridge fell and killed all those folks. So that's why it's a very famous story here. Um, and then you've got the Flatwoods Monster. Uh, and you've, you've actually got goat man sightings here in West Virginia. You've got the wampus cat. You've got giant serpents that have been reported. Giant winged uh, creatures such as that look like pterodactyls and uh, giant condor type birds. I mean, there's just tons and tons of them. They got one that's called an Ottawa that is a, uh, it looks like a two headed turtle and it is said to live on the riverbanks and it snatches people and takes, drags them down to their death in the water. There's just tons of them, tons of them. Snarly Yow. I mean, I can go on and on and on with West Virginia. The, the, the Fire Beast, there's one called the Fire Beast. I mean, there's so many of them. 
Um, Matt wants to know if you have skunk ape in um, in uh, West Virginia, well, the skunk ape. Okay, that's what I was trying to convey to everybody. Okay, so skunk ape is another name for Bigfoot. The reason it's called skunk ape because it's localized to down south in like Florida, Georgia, uh, Louisiana. And, you know, they, that's the term, the name that people gave it down there. It's another name for Bigfoot, okay? So... The, they call it the skunk cake because it stinks really yeah. bad and smells like the worst B.O. times a thousand, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's so what I imagine, heard. <laughs> you know, imagine, you know, uh, a beast covered in hair down in that tropical hot environment and it would sweat. It would pr- probably stink pretty bad, right? And people that I've interviewed and, 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 and over the years that have had encounters with the, the, the Florida skunk ape or the southern skunk ape, which is another name for Bigfoot, have said that, you know, this thing, they talk so much about how bad it stunk like that's the primary feature of these things it stinks so bad and you can smell it before you even see it that's how bad they yeah, stink. So, what i heard you know that's why that's how i got the name skunk ape so hey Chip- that's another, Chip- name, another name for a bigfoot type creature uh chipitary wants to know ask dave if smoke wolves are real or just made up for tv on mountain monsters <laughs> well okay so we all know Mountain Monsters. Mountain Monsters is a scripted show for entertainment purposes, okay? They they come up with names for some of these monsters. I've, I've heard talk of a smoke wolf, but it's so minute that I don't know if it's made up or if it's actually, in a, you know, something that somebody saw. Some Joe Blow could have saw a puff of smoke that looked like a wolf. That could have been, It could have been a supernatural happening is what I'm saying. But it's not widely known enough to to me that you know I would warrant it as an actual creature. But you know you never know. And now if you know three, four, or more people saw this same type of creature and reported it, yeah, then maybe maybe it could be legitimate. But it would seem to me that it was more supernatural. Um, you know, it's like a more like a ghost situation of a some type of creature because it's misty in nature, it's smoky, it's transparent, or whatever. So. You got to take everything, especially on TV, guys. You got to take everything with a grain of salt because they don't care about the, the telling the truth. And I, I'm not saying the Mount Monster guys are some of those guys are awesome guys, but you know they're just making a living, guys. It's entertainment. So um, um, the the production companies and that when they're doing a show like that, they're they're going to run with anything they can to make a good show, an entertaining show. So you know they've come up with some names on some of these monsters that I'm just like. Mm. That's never heard of that one before, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, Lisa Marie Kennedy wants to know: Are there any reported any reports of attacks by these creatures? Um, there's a couple that people claim to have been chased, but nobody has been like injured that I know of. Now, that's not to say that's not happened in, in way back in the day or something, but um, the ones that I'm dealing with specifically uh, with what I'm doing with my book, I haven't got any to this point that someone has claimed to be attacked by a dog man mm, okay <coughs> you want to talk, say anything else about dog man for the viewers that would uh, they would like to hear well it's kind of interesting you know just you know if you want to learn more you know get on the internet because there's some and type in European werewolf and see what comes up man there's some really interesting stories about all the old you know a lot of these old villages in France and Germany that had these werewolf problems and there's a lot of really famous stories that, and, and you know, and another thing is, you got to remember too. So most of our ancestors that came over here to the United States came from where Europe. So they brought all that folklore and all that tradition and all those mysterious, mystical stories with them, uh, and then they were told generation after generation. So with all those people moving over here. They brought that. Plus, if there was any werewolf type, you know, people that were werewolves, they came over here too. So, you know, take all that into account too. You know, that's pretty interesting stuff to me. Um, that folklore is very, uh, really, really steep in, in some traditions. There's even uh, somewhere I was going to tell you, Noreen, I forgot to tell you. <clears throat> there's some werewolf uh, folklore in Sicily that uh, comes out of Sicily as well. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I never even, I've never even thought about that or even searching that out. What's in Sicily? 
What's this? Yeah, it's all over Europe, Transylvania, all those countries, Romania, uh, England, France, uh, Spain. I mean, there's werewolf stories going in all those countries. So, you know, are all these people freaking crazy? No, they're not. Somebody's seen something, you know. So. Wow. Really interesting. Uh, and, you know, it fascinates me because of all the accounts I've gotten just right here in West Virginia in one state, you know, so. That's what prompted me to go more into this and, and actually write a book about it because no one, number one, no one's ever written a West Virginia dog man book, so I'm going to do it because oh. I've got enough information now and, and uh, accounts and sightings to do it. Uh, Dave, Christopher Chris wants to know, are there any creatures in the catacombs of Paris? Now, they're haunted, aren't they, those catacombs? Oh, uh, yeah, they're super haunted. Yeah. Uh, there are some... You know, but you gotta you gotta remember, there's all kind of weird CG stuff that goes on on uh, on the internet, right? And I've seen some crazy videos where people have been down in the catacombs supposedly, and there's this weird, almost looks like a wraith type creature that they're seeing down in the tunnels and down in the catacombs. But we don't know if that's CG or not, guys. You know, people would make anything now with these computers. So, you know, I mean. I don't know of any specific type creatures. I mean, there's rumor to be vampires in the catacombs, and, and of course it's haunted. I mean, you got to remember, all the walls in there are built on human bones, dead yeah. bodies, so there's definitely some hauntings going on down there for sure. Wow. That's crazy. Um, oh, we love listening to you talk, Dave. Uh, anything else you want to talk about about these uh, cryptids? No, that it's just cool, and um, you know, I think uh, you'd be surprised when you see the book, because there's some really crazy stories in there, yeah. and uh, accounts uh, from folks here in West Virginia, so I'm looking forward to getting it out there, super stoked to Ken Gerhardt for writing the foreword for me, and, and uh, we have some, uh, well, Jody Cook will be involved in it a little bit, he's known Dog Man Project, the United States Dog Man Project, North American Dog Man Project, he runs all that, so uh, we got some cool additions to the book with those folks and uh, just take a hard look at the West Virginia dog man stories and, and put that out there for folks to read and enjoy. When would this be bo this book be published? I say it's going to come out around in June sometime, June, July. That's a nice cover. I like the cover. Oh yeah, Ron Lanham did that. He's a friend of mine. He does some of my, he did the Cooking with Cryptids book cover for me and a lot of the art in there, all the most all of the art, and he's doing. I'm I'm working with him some on uh <clears throat> on the on different projects. So he he did an awesome cover for my uh, real West Virginia hauntings volume two, which will also be out this year. Um, and my revised West Virginia UFO book will be out in about mm, two and a half weeks. Wow. So that's like the second volume of that book. Um, and, uh, not a, and and the new uh, Bigfoot book will be out later this year too. Oh my God! And and, and I'm doing a uh, a little book on just haunted Richwood here. I've got all these old timers coming to me with all these stories and stuff, and that, that's what the um, the ghost walk I'm doing here in town is going to be based off of those stories. And we're going to there's some really cool famous stories here in Richwood, this little town. It's a one little stoplight town with a lot of history dates back to the 1700s and uh got a lot of crazy happenings old shootouts and murders and all kinds of crazy stuff went on in this little town huh? you know dave has some really good books and i have underneath the video i have the link to amazon channel um to the amazon um website where you can buy dave's books um, I'm telling you, they're they're really awesome. Now, Dave, let's tell the viewers the two projects that are they're oh. coming out. Let's do the Ma Barker first. So the Ma Barker is out already. It came out Tuesday. Okay, um, hold on for a minute. I gotta get some here. Uh, you can show the trailer mm. if you can bring oh, it up. Oh, I can't. I did, I have to set that up. I'm sorry. You should have told me. I would have done it. All right. Okay, I'm showing them the Ma Barker um, image. So the Ma Barker, the Ma Barker movie. Um, so this was uh, so if anybody knows about the old gangsters, you know where they used to rob banks, and it's a famous story. Uh, there's this famous gang called the Barker Gang in the 1930s, 
and Ma Barker was the mom of these boys and these other gangsters, and they, they would go around and literally rob banks, shoot people up, and all kinds of stuff. Well, long story short is they uh, they rented this house down in Oklahoma, Florida in 1935, and they wanted to rent the house for the season. So they did, and um, they were just kind of hiding out, and this is in the boonies of Florida, and my aunt lives two miles away from this house. Well, when I was down there visiting her, this was back in 2016, 2017, uh, I found out that that house was there, and that's where the famous shootout happened, and I found out that the house was in the exact order that it was during the shootout. All the same furniture was in it. There was bullet holes still in it from the shootout and everything else. So, of course, being and doing what I do, I had to go check this out, right? So I tried, and I went up on the porch, and it was for sale, and they wanted like $2 million for it, and I was like, man, I got to get in here somehow and investigate this place. Well, I talk, I finally got a hold of the owners of the house, and they were like, no way, we don't, we don't subscribe to any of that paranormal stuff and everything, and I was all bummed out, and I was like, man, that sucks. I said, well, it is for sale, and maybe you know it'll happen later on down the line. So in, <laughs> in 2017, they actually sold, they, they, it was a historical landmark because they, the FBI had the shootout. It was the longest shootout ever in FBI history and still is to this day. For over four and a half hours, Ma Barker and her son Fred had a shootout with the FBI until they were finally mortally wounded and killed both of them in, you know, from all the bullets flying through the house. And, um, so they ended up selling the house to the family that owned it, sold it to the park service. And, but they had the catch was the park service had to move the house. Right. So they actually put this house up on a, a barge and floated across Lake Weir there. It, Cause the house is right on this beautiful lake right there in Florida. And they floated it across to the, to the parks and recreation. And that's where it sent. Well, I got wind of this. So I started making phone calls, man. I was, I was like, bam, bam, bam. And I finally got a hold of it. It took me two weeks of phone work and legwork to find the right person to talk to. And I finally got a hold of this guy and convinced him to let me in there to investigate it. So, you know, and I was talking to Weatherly. Me and Weather were, were doing a ton of it. David Weatherly were doing a ton of investigations together at that time. And I said, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I said, David, man, you're not going to believe this, but I got us in there and everything. So we ended up going there for two nights spending the night, you know, all night long in this house and then we investigated and, you know, the furniture and everything is still in there from the shootout. It's a giant, the house is one giant trigger object. I mean, the bullets that went through Mom Barker and her son, some of them are stuck in the wall still with their blood on them. So just imagine that energy, paranormally, how intense that would be. So we got in there, and let me tell you, the, the energy was insane. We got some crazy evidence on the SOS camera. Um, you'll see it on the video. Uh, right where Fred died, we got a stick figure was crawling on the floor on his hands and knees, and that's right where Fred Barker lay dead. We got the pictures show it all. I mean, the mom was in the corner laying on the floor, and he was right beside her on the, on the floor dead. And they, they, the house was just shot up to Swiss cheese. It was crazy. But all the same furniture's in there and everything else. So it, it, it was one of those special locations that you just don't get into. And, and some people have done it since we did it, but we were the first, you know, and that's, that's a very special thing. And it just took us, you know, longer to get our movie out because we wanted it done right. We wanted the documentary movie done. And a couple people got in there and put out some stuff before we did, but we were the first ones, you know. We did it in 20, early, late 2017, early 2018 and just now got the movie out but it you know it doesn't matter we were the first and that's what's special to us and it was really a fascinating place to do and mm -hmm. the uh, video is available to see on scarenetwork.tv right now um or you can just wait in a couple of weeks i'll have the dvds and everything and i'll have them here at the store so you can you can stream the the movie on scarenetwork.tv or you can buy it on there you know and just download it so um, it's, it, we're excited to have that out now the other one that's out is uh, finally part one of my Willow's Week documentary uh, uh, filmed by Billy uh, Lewis of uh, Orange Street Films and uh, Nick Sedato put that all together for us they did a phenomenal job Noreen saw the trailer for that one too no, it's on my Facebook if you want to go see the trailers it's on my Facebook and stuff 
um, and there's actually we, we, he released the first ten minutes of the movie, so you can watch that for free. If you want to watch the whole thing, uh, you can go over to ScareNetwork.tv and download it or stream it. So there's a weird bug flying around in here or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of really cool video, and I'm and that's part one. There's still a whole other part coming to that. So and it's both are full length documentaries, hour and twenty something minutes a piece. So super stoked that those are finally out. And we got more stuff coming out too, so looking forward to all that. Yeah, I have a question for you, but first, um, uh, Sarah Claire, uh, <clears throat> is this uh, is it uh, is it not, and any of this on your uh, you your YouTube channel? You don't have this on your YouTube channel. Where do you have this information? No, uh, I don't have any of those on there. Uh, on there, it's on ScaredNetwork.tv. It's a streaming app. You can go on your Fire Stick and uh, get the app. Um, you know, just type in ScareNetwork.tv and you'll see it. Um, and you can log in for free and everything. And then you can either subscribe or you can download it by project. You can go to each movie and say, I want to see that one and stream it. Or you can get DVDs from, from me here at the store. Uh, but, you, of course, you got to be here. So we have, we don't have the online store up and running yet, but that's coming soon. So you can, you can buy signed copies of the DVDs, uh, which will be out. You know, the Mall Barker will be out in about two weeks here at the store. It'll be here. And uh, Willow's Week will probably be out in like three to four weeks. Um, uh, do you want to send me the links and I'll put it under the video where they can watch the, where they can buy these videos? Uh, scared? I can put this. ScareNetwork.tv. It's a Fire Stick app. You can download the app on your Fire Stick and all that. Just, just go, and go on Google and type in ScareNetwork.tv. It'll tell you all about it. And there's a lot of other movies on there that I'm in, too. When uh, Fonte Flora is in there, the same place I did on the show Ghost Nation. We did a documentary on that. That just came out recently, too. I mean, there's a bunch of them that I've been in on there, on that network. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. Hey, Dave, uh, you know, would you, Dave owns this Willow's Weep House, which is... Oh my God! I would, I would, I would never own this house, but he's brave and he bought this house. <laughs> and this now, see, I'm showing you the top of the house that's shaped in a cross. Dave, tell them, a, give them some history on this house. Yeah, so the house was built in 1890. It was built by a mason, a Freemason for another mason. Why it's built in the shape of a cross? And who only knows? Um, a lot of weird stuff to this house. A lot of deaths in this house, suicides and over and other deaths in this house. Um, many people had investigated before I ever owned it. The, the former owner had some crazy stuff happen and she let, started letting paranormal people come in to try to figure out what the problem was, what was going on. People have been scratched, people have died that have been in that house investigating it, all kind of really bad stuff. Um, her husband almost died twice after going in the house uh, from weird circumstances and uh, you know, they felt that it was uh, becoming too much and too dangerous. So she called me up one day and said, do you want to buy this house? And I'm done with it. And I said, well, doing what I do, that would be a great opportunity to have my own paranormal lab. So that's what I did. And, uh, I, you know, I was letting other teams in there get, they were documenting evidence. And then we put a lot of it into the first book about it, with those weeb, the beginning. And uh, then we did a documentary on it. And tell some of those stories in there and there's actually investigations going on in the documentary one team was really messed up from it one lady on the team got trashed in there really bad and, and you just gotta watch the movie guys it's pretty compelling stuff and I, I'm in there basically just telling some of the history of the house and the, the movies I'm I mean I got you know other people investigating it in there too and they're sharing you know we share the evidence they caught and what we got in there and all kinds of stuff so it's just, uh, it's the real deal when it comes to the paranormal. There's no TV BS. Of course, you know, Billy's a filmmaker, so he, he, you know, he had some crazy, creepy music to some parts of it, some cool intro stuff and stuff like that. But the, the investigation part is just all evidence that was captured in there at various times. And uh, if you've ever seen the Shadow Man clip, it's in there. I mean, it's spooky as all get out. Mm -hmm. Full body Shadow Man during the day. Yeah, yeah. that's just sure happenstance that was captured not even during the investigation. Yeah, so that's insane. Of security camera footage in there of things moving on their own, and just all kinds of stuff. All right, so now hold on, let's go to the world of weird. 
Dave Spinks World of Weird. Weird. You guys want to see the store? Yeah, hold on. Let me go to another image here. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, tell, first tell them about the store. Tell them about it. So the store was an idea I had like, I don't know, it's got to have been, what, seven, eight, nine years ago now. <laughs> but going around the country speaking at conferences and stuff, um, and I had always had some of this stuff, you know, my books and, and uh, my, you know, some of my merch and different things. I always had this stuff on my tables. And I was like, man, I, I, I always loved that, that kind of carnival -y atmosphere and I want to sell this stuff in a store and make it basically like your one-stop shop for all things paranormal. Now, mind you, I have more stuff coming. I'll have a whole paranormal equipment section soon and I have all kind of hoodies, t-shirts. It's a merch store, but it's also a store for investigators. So when you come in, if you need Palo Santo wood, you can get it. If you need crystals, you can get it. If you need holy water, you can get it. If you need protection bracelets, you can get it. Holy oils, blessed oils, you can get it. So it's really a one-stop shop for all kinds of paranormal stuff um, to include merch and stuff for the kids. You know, we got a kids section. We got we, we got soaps. We're, we're going to have cooking items. We have hot sauce. You know, I mean, my books, other author friends of mine's books on all these different topics. Um, the store is constantly playing we have a TV playing with paranormal shows 24-7 while we're open <coughs> of all sorts of subjects. We have, I mean, it's just a one-stop shop for all kinds of stuff. We've got saging kits. We have ear, Bigfoot earrings, you know, just to name a few things. We have all the different types of sage you can think of, rainbow sage, dragon's breath sage, white sage. We've got just a lot of everything in here. Hats, you know, beanies, socks, crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, t tell them about the uh, image behind, the uh, st thing behind you, that Bigfoot. Oh. So this I had created by uh, a special effects guy who does the, that stuff for, he loves doing it. He, uh, he uh, his name's Stephen Bishop, and he, uh, he creates all kind of monsters, man, you know, for different things. He does it because he loves doing it. I uh, actually, my girlfriend Jim came across his stuff. He's like, "Oh my God, you got to see this guy's stuff!" And let's contact him and see if he can make us some stuff for the store. So that's what we did. And the first result of that is you see behind me an eight and a half foot tall Bigfoot. <laughs> that's awesome, Mon Dave. I call him Manga for Monongahela Monster. Monsters. So basically. I wanted to have something that was kind of similar to what me and my papaw saw. Now, I never saw the one's face that we saw. I only saw it from quarter and away from us, but that's the pretty much dead spot on color of the one we saw. Wow. You know, so I, I made sure that he uh, made it in the reddish, blackish, brown color. And uh, and he's one of the attractions here at Dave Space World Weird. Uh, soon we will have Monster Row where we're going to have a full-size Flatwoods monster that's 10 feet tall. We're going to have a full-size Mothman. We're gonna have a full size dog man too, and more, and alien little little gray aliens and stuff. So, if you guys want me to show you around the store, I can do. Yes, that. yes, yeah. Uh, I I want them to on. go to. I want them to see the storefront. It's friggin' amazing. So I'll go. I'll just walk with the camera down till I get out to the front. Yeah. And then I'll walk in the door. She can kind of take it all in. Okay. They want to know how they can get to your store. I'll tell you in a minute here. Um, so it's it's in Richwood, West Virginia. The address is 43 Oakford Avenue. And uh, if you just Google it on Google Maps and all that, you should be able to find it. All right. So I'll turn the camera around and walk you through here just one second. All right. So here's the front. It's nighttime now, of course, so. That's a seven foot tall uh, wooden Bigfoot carving looking in the window at you. There's the front sign, and then you come in, and here's the front door wordage. And then we'll go around to the right. We got all kind of cool artists and stuff made from various people, and and store stuff. We got some Bigfoot signs, Bigfoot drawings, paintings, um, all kind of movies, more artwork of all 
all kinds of monsters and whatnot. All kinds of books on all topics of the paranormal. These are these are made out of clay, handmade for the store and uh, by Lucifer Hair. Some of the movies, docs that I'm in, and a little bit of everything. You can see, we got drawings of different strange cryptids and animals that's for sale by various artists. We got paintings of the Flatwood Monster, you know, various artists, like I said, drawings. There's in the my books shelf there. We've got Hot Sauce by Lyle Blackburn, his monster sauce, the new Swamp Sensation right there is the green, and then he has the the Road Red Chili Sauce. Awesome, very good, um, very, very good hot sauces. And there's the Cooking with Cryptid book that was my newest book that just came out recently. Um, some of Ken Gerhard's books right here. Good friend, he's the one that's doing uh, the uh, dog man uh, forward for me. And you can see here's a show he was on, like the Wolf Man on History Channel. He he did that show where he went over to Europe and did a bunch of cool stuff. Of course, Johnny Zabbis, my friend's books are in here. He sent a bunch of his books down for the store. A little bit of everything in the world of weird. And of course, we've got Zoltar. What are you waiting for? Come on over for a small tea. Zoltar will give you a wealth of wisdom. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> so this sign up here, right there, was actually, if you ever seen the movie Paul, the alien movie, it's hilarious. But that sign was in the movie. That's a real movie prop from the movie Paul. So that's kind of an attraction. And we got, you know, all kind of t-shirts. Um, just all kind of cool stuff. These bottles are handmade for us, and uh, they're laid. They're uh, acid etched, and they light up. They're different creatures on them. Just weird, different stuff. You know, it's the world of weirds. So you can see they light up. Flatwoods monster. These coffee cups are made. Each one is hand done, and they're hand drawn and hand, you know, hand made out of clay and fired and colored and everything. And that's why they cost so much because they're essentially each one is there's no two the same in their pieces of art really so you got all kind of hot sauce like I said different ones smoking squash sauce Lyle sauces different books book of beasts strange highways we got face <laughs> got the face mask for the COVID if you want a face mask we got alien flingers UFO flying toys sage kits of course, this is where I just did the show from, but you can see Bigfoot there. More T-shirts, more T-shirts. Uh, garden yard flags of Bigfoot style. Bird houses, Bigfoot bird houses. And these are really cool, these bird feeders. I got them moved out of the way because of the table where I was doing the show, but you can see these are really cool. So you put your bird feed right in here, and you can feed the birds with Bigfoot. Notebooks, more coffee cups, more. You know, got hoodies. These are really cool. Um, you've got some Bigfoot soap in here, different. So this is homemade natural soap, and it's covered with alpaca hair. That's it's all clean and everything, you know, sanitary. But it's all natural soap, and that's made by a local company here in West Virginia. And it's called Mountain Soap Company, Wild Mountain. You can see it right there. Got UFO socks, a little bit of everything. We've got uh, some comics. We've got this is some of our authentic Native American handmade stuff here and down here. We've got drums and rattles. It's all handmade by natives for us. And these necklaces and bracelets are handmade. More sage, Bigfoot earrings, alien ear necklaces and earrings. Some dream catchers are all made there. And little other Bigfoot knickknacks, bracelets, Bigfoot hats. These little mothmen that are made out of felt. These are really crazy. More coffee and then some more books. Stan Gordon's books, Frank Bennett's books. Kids section right here. Poise cards. Grow Yeti in water, grow Bigfoot in water, activity books, bendy toys, 
Bigfoot scat in a can, all kind of crazy stuff. And you can see, um, like, there's the thing from the unexplained I was on. Haunted doll from a case I did. That's a real haunted doll up there. I used to keep her over there on that shelf, but she didn't like it because every morning I would come in and she'd be laying on the floor over there or way over there. So I had a little talk with her and I said, I'm going to over here and see if you like it there. And if you like it, don't move. And she hasn't moved. Oh and then Jen found her a little chair and we put her in her own little chair up there so she can watch over everything. So she's like been real cool since then. She hasn't moved anymore. Oh, that's awesome. It's kind of kind of creepy. <laughs> Sick. So, um, so here we have one of our it's one of our crystal racks. So some of the crystals, if you're into crystals and and holistic healing and all that, we have plenty of that stuff here. Every you know, every crystal you can think of, just about sage, kits, and. Got Lyle Blackburn shelf over here. His music and his hot sauce and his books, some of his books. More crystals with Bigfoot. Other books by other authors of all different topics in the paranormal. Then I also sell Girl Scout cookies for the Girl Scouts and uh, candy bars for the local high school band here. We're doing fundraisers for them. And there's some of our keychains. Now, these are all handmade, you know, each one is different. Bigfoot tracks, James Book bracelets, sacred pattern, uh, necklaces, protection bracelets, and we also have messing with Sasquatch, Jack Lance, big beef jerky, more crystals, more bracelets, buttons, pins, stickers, candy. <laughs> so a little bit of everything here in the world weird. More coming too. Dave, uh, Dave, go back to the front. Oh, oh. Huh? Go back to the front and then show them all the way back. So go to the door okay. and then turn your camera around and show them how huge this store is. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That yeah, is. Eight thousand square feet. So. Oh my God! And uh, are you, are you, they have a co the conference room? What a fabulous yeah. conference room! Yeah, I'll go over here. I'll go over here and show you guys this. This is where we do small events. And bear with me while I turn the lights. And we're still cleaning up for from our um, cleaning up from our uh, last uh, shindig we had. So there's a little bit of messiness. So excuse that. So here's our chairs and our conference area. So nice. So a lot more coming over here. But we had a lot of people in here last time, so we're still we're getting ready for our next conference. And here's some of the blessed oils and everything that she has. Oh, one of the viewers wants to know who blesses your uh, oils and holy water. <laughs> well, we have Jen does all that, but she, we also have priests and stuff do it as well. She's a minister, so this is a quick look at her. This is her healing center back here for holistic healing. A whole nother room. Nice. So that... We have a lot of space here. We do a lot of things, a lot more coming. We'll be offering classes and all kinds of different stuff coming soon. What's the total square footage of that whole building that you guys have? Is it 10,000? It's over 8,000. It's huge. So nice. I just love it. So you can see, you know. More crystals, of course. <laughs> Jen's books over there, some of them. But yeah, so we have, we're, you know, doing a lot here. And uh, she has a whole nother center up in PA too. So um, right now it's in transition, changing locations. But uh, yeah, it's a lot going on here. So That's... if you can ever make it down, come on down. You know, we're always getting new inventory, new merch in, and we're selling it much as we get in so it's hard to keep it fully stocked we are just selling a ton of stuff here so you know oh it's so nice what an amazing store dave that's some of my personal collection of stuff back there you talked about this store for years 
He used to tell me, and look, yep. Dave, it came true. It came true. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm a firm believer you can manifest what you want, and if you stay in a positive mindset and you work hard, you can make stuff happen for yeah. yourself. So, you know, if you're a nasty, negative person all the time, you're going to sit in your own. We call it setting, Jen calls it sitting in your own poop, but she uses the other word, of course. So, <laughs> um, if you want to sit in your own poop and you don't do nothing about it, guess what you're going to do? You're going to sit in your own poop. <laughs> so, if you want stuff to happen, you got to change your whole mindset and, you know, move into that positive realm and stay positive and be good and work hard and you you can make stuff happen for yourself. I never thought I'd write books. I never thought, you know, I'd be on TV doing this stuff, but I did. Yeah. So it, you know, and I did it myself. I didn't have any help, you know? So. Yeah. You're, um, you've got a great thing going, Dave. It's only going to get better. So it's a lot of fun and it's not work for me. If you, if you have a passion for something, um, you know, make it happen for yourself. You know, I do this because I enjoy it and I have a passion and it fascinates me. So I'm retired. You know, I retired from federal law enforcement 20 years government time and I do this for fun and, and because I have a passion for it. I don't right. have to do it. I do it because I like to do it. Yeah. Well, you, you, you dreamt big and now you got it. And at the same time, I'm helping the community. You know, this is a small town, USA, that was dying. And we're helping to bring it back, you know. And just in one day during our last thing, we had over 300 people here from seven different states. So, oh, my God. You know, that's what we want. Those people come in. They have to rent a room to stay, and they have to buy gas and food, and the town benefits off of that. So that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, you're in a historic town, right? Well, yeah, this town dates back to the 1700s. It used to be a boom town with lumber and mining industries, um, but that was way back. And then it started declining in the 70s and 80s, really, you know, from all the cutbacks and everything else. But, uh, you know, it's slowly coming back. It's becoming a it's becoming a cool little town. There's there's cool stuff coming in. There's new, brand new, really top-notch B&Bs coming in here. There's an art gallery. Uh, several new restaurants that are making some really cool and hip new, you know, new types of food, and uh, it's it's really starting to grow again. So it's a lot of fun seeing that happen, you know, and uh, and everybody's working together to make it happen. Yeah, so nice. I I love when you show me your store. I just I love it. Hey, um, you and Jen are coming back on the show. Um, in June, I think it is. I don't have my calendar with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell the viewer. Oh, now this was really interesting. Um, what you guys are going to be talking about? So we'll be talking about the the spiritual and energy side of things more, and how I've kind of, you know, you guys, your your longtime viewers know me. You know, I used to run and gun and and try to just document evidence, but. I've realized more now that it is much more, I don't know, more on the energy side and spiritual side of things for me now. I concentrate on trying to, I've done enough documenting. I, I, I don't need to validate, you know, validate it for myself anymore. I know it's there and uh, now I concentrate on helping people more. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about that. Oh, but you and, were talking about all this, this, um, uh, uh, really evil stuff that's happening. Yeah, there's a lot of evil stuff going on in the world today, and we'll be sharing some of that stuff, what we know about, and what, what we see going on, you know, um, with some of these cases we've been working, it's just insane, um, some of the stuff. And she'll blow you away, guys. She's died five times, you know. Uh, she was a college professor. She's got more letters and numbers under her name than <laughs> 10 people put together, you know, with her degrees and all of her certifications and everything. And she tell, she'll tell you about, I think her and Noreen are going to do some shows and she's, <clears throat> her, she's got really, really good abilities. Her ability, she works with law enforcement on cold case files, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, um, and we do investigations together, you know, and she, she, you know, if you guys know me, you know, I'm very skeptical when it comes to psychics and people that have abilities because over the last 15, 20 years, so many charlatans have come out of the woodwork. But 
I can tell you firsthand, uh, she's blown me away on some stuff and really opened my eyes to a whole different side of the spiritual side of things and this and, and, and such and uh, and really uh, has taught me some things that uh, about myself and other things that gives me a lot of explanations on why I'm able to get what I get when I investigate and stuff. So, you know, it's pretty uh, pretty compelling and uh, I look forward for you guys to meet her on Noreen's show because she, she's going to blow you away. I'm telling you right now. Oh yeah, I have a show scheduled with her. Um, I don't have the I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I've got a show, um, and and day and uh, she also um, has expressed an an interest in airing shows with us uh, on uh, unsolved disappearances and uh, murder mysteries. She yeah, what she, she works with law enforcement, and and I have too, you know, and we're doing some more of that right now as we speak. But um, we we work with with unsolved cold cases on some on some occasions so some of the stuff we're doing is pretty cutting edge and it's it's yielding results <laughs> so. oh. oh i can't wait to do those shows with her dave um is there anything else you want to tell the viewers what's going on anything else um other than that i mean i got some tv stuff brewing uh that's always bonus and fun so we'll just have to see how those pan out and uh more documentaries are going to be coming out, uh, and we'll have those DVDs, like I said, in the store. And more books coming out uh, based off my cases and whatnot over the years. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and I highly encourage you come down to World Weird sometime. I think you'll love it if you're into this stuff, which I know you are because you're watching this show. <laughs> come on, check it out. <laughs> oh, God. Geez, Dave, I, we're so happy for you. The viewers loved it. Um, they were really happy that you showed the store to them. They just, they're so happy for you, and uh, they love your store, Dave. And they love Zoltar. Is it Zoltar? I love Zoltar. <laughs> He's fabulous. I've won one of those for years, and it finally I know. happened. I know, I know. And, and believe it or not, that one is semi-famous because it sat out in front of the Excalibur Casino in Vegas for many, many years. No way. Really? Yeah, it was uh, actually... Uh, so, I'll tell you the story if you want to hear it. Yes, it. of course. So, uh, I had been talking, you know, when I was talking to you about doing this store, I, I said, I got to get a Zoltar. I want a Zoltar for the store, right? So, if you know anything about those things, they're super expensive to get a brand new one. So, I told the guy that that's the owner, one of the main guys in the store. I said, if you ever find a used one that you can get for me or sell, because he buys used ones from people when they their stores close or whatever, I said, let me know. Let's work out a deal. Well, this was like six years ago. And one day out of the blue, and I had talked to I, I always talk to him like once, once a year or one, twice a year. I said, you got me for me? Not yet, man. I'm still looking. Well, he just called me out of the blue like two months ago. And he said, I got one for you, and this is what it is. So they were doing construction out in front of the casino where this thing sat for a long time, and some dummy ran it over with a backhoe, <laughs> like smashed it all to pieces, right? So he said, uh, what you're going to, you know, um, it's going to be totally redone. Um, the only thing used on it will be the cabinet. We're going to refurbish the cabinet, and you'll have a whole new Zoltar and internals and everything. And that's how I got it. And I got it for a huge discount compared to what a brand new one costs. So it was able to happen, you know, because these things are super expensive. They're like 10 or 15, 10, they're over 10 grand for mm -hmm. one of them. So, yeah. Hey, know. Dave, they want to know Jen. They want to know Jen's name and if she wrote a book. Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, I'll show you her book. One second. Let me flip the camera around here. So her name, she goes by Serenity Jenny, but her name's Jennifer Schwartz Flack. And uh, this is her book, right there. Oh, here. Hold on for a minute. Let me get um. Let me get a close up on that. Hold on. Let's see if I can get a close up on that. Hold on, Dave. Okay, Mac. All right. Let me bring this down. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. And her name is. What's her name? Her name's Jennifer Flagg, but she goes by Serenity Jenny right. at her school. Um, so that's that's her whole story, and it tells about 
what happened to her growing up in her life and all the different things that have happened to her and why she does what she does today. Wow. She's got quite a background. Yeah, she does. Okay, that's Dave. That's awesome. I don't think they have any more questions. Um, Dave, thanks so much for being on the show. You know the viewers love having you on the show. Um, they love when you talk about the cryptids and, and Bigfoot. And I love the Flatwood Monster. That is my all-time favorite. Uh, I mean, well, I really love that. Coming, so. That's, uh, you know, I got a whole bunch more info on that for the new... I'll show you the... Uh, this is the cover for the revised edition of the UFO book right here. You can see that, see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's so weird. Put, go over to your right a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. And the thing about that's the that image is uh, an image that um, uh, the the people that actually saw this flatwood monster. That's the image. Now the thing about it is, the monster is really an alien, right, Dave? Every when I, yeah. I it's an alien. That's the, yeah, it's an alien. You know? It's so weird. So. How many times he, they've only he that was only what? Well, that that happened in 1952. So you got to imagine people then they never even heard of really anything like that. So anything like that was uh, they called it a monster because it scared them to death. You know, so that would scare me too if I saw here, something like you know, that. Here's the original drawing from the eyewitness report. So this is a copy of it, right there. That's yeah. a copy of the original drawing. Yeah. That's one of the eyewitnesses, the last living ones that saw it. Is that crazy? Come down a little bit. Down this way? Bit. No, down, down. Yeah, down. Yeah, there you go. Can you imagine seeing that? And, and Dave, it was, only, it, it was only seen, what, a couple of times? And nobody's ever seen it again. No, nope, yeah, that was That's... it. Now, it was, there was more than one instance that happened where... So if you, you know, you got to read the book, but there's numerous sightings of this things, but it was only over a couple of day period. Um, and by just those kids and then a young couple with a newborn baby saw it about eight, nine, 10 miles away from where those kids saw it the very next day. So, but it was described a little bit different. That's so, so crazy. But Dave, isn't this so weird? It's never been seen again. What the heck was it? Never been seen know. again. I'm sort of, you know, people theorize that uh, it was a rescue mission because during the, in 1952, um, our our pilots, our military pilots, were ordered to chase these craft down and shoot them down if they could. And it's theorized that we actually shot one down, and they were down there trying to rescue. You know, other aliens that were with them came to try to rescue the down one, and that was one of the occupants of the other ship, and they. He was like standing guard or something to that effect, and the kids having to walk right up on him and saw him, and that's what they drew. And they, the the cool part about it is, so they separated all the kids when they were interviewing them, and they all gave the same exact story and drew the same exact pictures. Yeah. So, you know, that's compelling. That's when you interview suspects or eyewitnesses. That's what you want because that's how you tell if they're telling the truth or not. Um, hold on for a second. Um, uh, lots of ebooks. Uh, uh, yeah, we've we've heard of Bill Bean. I've had Bill Bean on the show at least eight or nine times. Dave knows who yeah. Bill Bean is. Yeah, oh, if yeah. you if you go into my archives, you'll see the shows that I have with Bill Bean, and and Dave and I also did a show on the Flatwood Monster. Dave, I've had I've had Dave on what nine times at least. If not more, uh, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've been on. I've been on your show. I don't know. Going back to 2013. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. And, and then when you were at the the Wells House and you wrote that book, we did a book on that too. You finally came out. What last year? Um, what? what? Yes. Yeah, that was actually. I got it right here. Here it is. Wicked Forty Six. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, that that was the first book I ever wrote, and it, there was some legalities involved, so it didn't come out till this past year. It was done for what six, seven years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it yeah. On the shelf, 
Yeah, and we the, were able to release it. So yeah, the background. And I remember Dave. He would call me up. Oh my God, we used to be up till four o'clock in the in the morning. And Dave, <laughs> Dave would, yeah, Dave was, hey, I, would read her. I, I know. I'd say, hey, I, I said I finished this chapter. Do you want to hear it? And I'd read her the chapter. And she was like, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God! I'm really that. What? And that was Dave's first book, and I couldn't believe it. What I couldn't believe what he was writing. It was like a, a this some professional was writing this book, and what comes just what comes out naturally is crazy. His book. Well, oh my God! I'm his books are amazing. I just tell it like you know it was that book was written like a daily journal of what I experienced in that house with those other investigators. Oh, oh my God! I, I remember. I was the stuff that we experienced in that house. Oh, we were with you the whole time when you were at that house. It yep. was crazy. You that book is amazing. I'm telling you, I there's a link under the video where you can buy Dave's books. His books are unbelievable i mean they he his writing it's so interesting and it just you just want to keep reading more and more and more when he was reading those chapters to me i didn't want him to stop so he would he would call me yes i wrote another chapter read it to me it was oh my god it was like, awesome I'm dave book, and uh, i'm sold out of several of my books i got a new order company but, yeah um Here's another documentary we did on Scare Network TV called Malefice with uh, me, Sean Austin, and Eric Connor in that one. Go That's over, go a over a little. Oh, we didn't see that. Pull, go over a little bit. Yeah, there you go, Malefice. Yeah. Yeah, that's on Scare Network TV too. That's downright scary. Uh, Sean got an attachment from that case, and we went back five years later to the to the to the month and cleaned, cleared it and cleansed it. It was really crazy story so um patty wants to know are you going to the bigfoot conference in the convention center in tennessee you're going to some conference but what is it uh, not i'm not doing the tennessee one this year i'm doing uh doing a ufo conference in Whistville, virginia coming up and i'm, I'm speaking at the Ke kecksburg ufo conference in pennsylvania this year I'm going. I'll be at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. I'll be at. Um, of course, we're having an event here at the store. We're having a Cosmic Consciousness event, May seventh. So you can still get tickets for that. Uh, they're only like fifty bucks, forty bucks for the entire day, uh, and it's very limited number. So you get like first up close and personal stuff with the speakers. Um, and uh, let's see where else am I speaking this year? Uh, I'll be at Mothman. I'm not speaking at Mothman this year, but I'll be there. Um, and because uh, they rotate that every other year and they haven't had one for two years so they're still catching up from two years ago wow. but then I'll, I'll be at the Wild and Weird Con here at uh, Chief Logan State Park later in October jeez um, where else that's that's all I can think of off the top of my head right now but um, you, you go to my website soon and I'll have all that stuff updated because I'm updating all my calendars right now it will be the show Whoops, there's no time. <laughs> okay, tell them again where your store's located. Okay, it's in Richwood, West Virginia. The address is 43 Oakford Avenue, Richwood. <laughs> so it's about about 35 minutes south of the Flatwoods Monster Museum in Sutton, West Virginia. So pretty much in the center of the state, you know. So uh, we got all kind of cool merch here and more coming in and we're doing crazy events and paranormal classes and holistic healing stuff and everything else under the sun. We got it all here. Dave, you, you got to get your online store up and running. People want to buy stuff. Yeah, we're working on that. That's what I was going to say. We're going to get the online store up and running probably in the next month or so. And then all those DVDs will be available. Books will be available. Everything won't be available, but most of our, you know, our biggest selling stuff will be available online. So. Okay, great. So, oh, thanks, Dave. Love having coming. you. Love having you on the show. Always an interesting Thank show. Always, always, always. Oh, any time. You know that. <laughs> okay. Have have a great weekend. Be safe, and I'll be talk. I'll well, I'll talk to you. 
the next show with Jen, right? We'll yeah. Here again with Jen. Yep, yep. And then uh, another show with you. I think it's in it's in June sometime. I don't yep. have my calendar. Okay, honey, I'll I'll be talking to you in a couple of days anyway. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Enjoyed it. I we did too. Night, honey. Thank you. Bye. Right. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Gosh, um, I love Dave. Such a great guest. Um, geez, I had a picture. Anyway, um, I've got shows scheduled. I've got them up on the on the front page of my uh, YouTube channel, and I thought I took an image so I could show show that to you. Um, and I don't have it. Anyway, um, I've got some great shows scheduled, and. Dave's girlfriend Jen she said that she uh, would come and do shows with me on unsolved mysteries she's from what Dave told me she's unbelievable so um, I'm gonna hold her to it because I'm really excited about doing those kind of shows and of course Dave um, we'll have him on again always love having Dave and he'll be again He'll always be a guest on my show. Anyway, so guys, thanks so much for being here. Let's do some shout outs. Um, let me move over to my other chat room over here. And I really appreciate you being here. Hold on. Thank you so much. All right, let's do some shout outs. Of course, shout outs to my my mods, Renee McDowell and Chippa Terry. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody thank them. Without them, you, we wouldn't have the great chat room that we have. Um, so let's do some shout outs. Ren, Renee, uh, Renee, hold on. Let me go up here. Let me go back up here. I know that every, some people are coming off. Chippa Terry, my mod. Beat 3 Airspace, Chris, Christopher Chris. Free Bird, B3 Airspace, uh, Karen Piotti, um, Renee McDowell, uh, Matt T. Let's see, most of you guys are going. We had a nice crowd tonight. Uh, okay, most people are going. Sarah Claire Claire, Dust Bunny, Lori Miller. Thank you for subbing. Hey, guys, if you haven't subbed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would sub. If you sub, you'll get notifications um, of the show when it goes live. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Aaron Brody. We go way back. Ascent eccentrically mindful para-investigations. Oh, um, except uh, Mindful Para, I didn't have a show last week. My um, computer uh, busted. The hard drive went down. So I just got a new hard drive, and that's why I have a show. Oh, I got a show on Sunday. Um, uh, I got a show on Sunday with Val Valerie. Uh, we're going to do um, the astrology reading on them. Um, JFK Jr., Natalie Wood, and, um, oh God, the comedian that just died, I forget his name. Sh she did a three profiles on them. It's very interesting. Uh, I had that all set up, and of course the show couldn't go because of the hard drive going down, but it's going to be a good show. And that's on Sunday the 10th. That's this coming Sunday. So hope you join us. Um, let's see. Whoops. Whoops. Um, let's see. Um, who else? Oh, Na oh, Nancy Santa Maria. I haven't seen you in a long time. Anybody else want to shout out? Oh, um, Renee, you're in Australia too, aren't you, honey? Sarah Claire's from Australia is in Australia. I know Tallcross was in here. My buddy from Scotland. I don't see him now. Um, if you 
have time to think about giving some positive thoughts to Tall Cross. He's still uh, recuperating and he's still not back 100%. He could sure use your prayers. Also keep prayers in mind for uh, Renee and Chip and Terry, our mods. Um, they've been, without them, I'm telling you, the chat room would not be the great chat room that you guys um, are enjoying. And the group hug to everybody for being here. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you coming to the shows when I have them. Uh, okay, I think that's about it, everybody. Oh, Anita. Anita Ackerman. Anita, Anita. Anybody else? Lots of ebooks. Anybody else want to shout out? Lynn Bowling. Oh, hi, Lynn Bowling. Uh, anybody else? Haven't seen you for a while. Patty Mash, you're new, Patty. Anybody else? Uh, okay, guys. I, oh, Tammy Heitzman was in. I think she had to leave early. Uh, anybody else want to shout out? Andrew Johnson. Oh, uh, let's see. Worked in New Forest. Okay. Huge deer. Huh, interesting. Wow. Anybody else in here still that wants a shout out? Oh, um... Christopher, Chris, we are, I, I, that is one of the, um, topics. Uh, oh, 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 I forgot. I got in touch with another psychic. Uh, she has certifications. She's been certified by, by a school or some organization that she went to and, um, uh, of, of her psychic abilities and she was tested. We're going to do a, a show on haunted houses and, um, and, and about the people that were involved in this house and, and, and the, the murders. And Amityville, Valeska, oh God, I can't remember. The, there's a couple of them that we're going to do, and Amityville is one of them. Because I did do a show uh, on the Amityville, and I did it with this woman, Jackie, and I can't remember her last name. She used to have a show years ago on TV. And um, she would interview... Um, infamous people and she interviewed uh, Ronnie DeFeo and she became very very close with Ronnie DeFeo almost like really close and he gave her information that he wouldn't give to anybody else and I have she gave me um, she released some of that video to me and I have when we did the show I aired it in, in clips as we as we talked uh, during the show, and um, I may I don't know if I have it all in one piece. I may have it, but um, anyway, I want to know about him because I've there's something really strange about the whole thing. Even though he he was a, and he just recently died. Anyway, he was accused of the murders. There's but there's more to it than that. So anyway, we're gonna do a haunted haunted houses and she's going to do psychic readings on these houses i'm really i forgot about that one okay anybody else um want to shout out okay all right well i'm gonna go now uh oh jd bamba bambara jackie barrett that's right christopher jackie barrett yeah i had a hard time getting her to concentrate when i did the show with her um but yeah, she was really, uh, really well known on TV at one time. Anyway, so I got some good stuff coming up. Uh, everybody, okay, I'm going to go now, okay? And everybody, I love you. Group hug to you. And, and be safe, everyone. And thank you so much for watching. Um, and I really appreciate it. And please, um, if you like the video tonight, if you would give it a like and please, please subscribe to my channel if you, if you haven't done so. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, love you guys. And I'll see you. Uh, don't forget Sunday. I have a show. 
Um, I think it's a 3.30, and that's going to be a good one. I'm really excited to hear what she has to say about Natalie Wood um, and, and uh, the conspiracy with JFK Jr., okay? So, everybody, thank you so much. I love you guys, and good night, and have be safe, and have a great weekend. Love you. See you Sunday. Don't forget. Good night. Thank you.